Hi everyone. Today I'm going to go over shipping because I've noticed that there's been a few people saying that they couldn't get the shipping to work. So I'm going to show you how that you're going to sh set up shipping and this is going to work in your Square store. So you're going to lo log into your Square dashboard. You're going to go to your online store. Then when you click on that, you go down under settings, you'll see where it says shipping. So when you click on that, it's going to bring up a screen for you here in just a second. What you want to do is you want to fill out your address. So I have my name, Blue Jules Gems. This is um, my mailing address. It's going to be, it should be a physical address. So my mailing address is actually the post office box and where I live, you can't get to it. So I just use the post office address. It's the same thing. Um, so it's a physical address. And then your destination and rates. You, you want to do add a region. When you go in into add a region, you will have a blank screen like this. Usually I would search for um, United States, you want to bring in the United States and minor outlying areas or outlying islands. That's going to include your, um, the ones that we can ship to you like Puerto Rico and um, places like that. And then when you do that, it gives you you bring in your region and then it's going to ask you what your so like I did when I did mine I did USA 50 states and nine um, properties which are your outlying islands so I would actually if you can look at the USA and the 50 states and the nine properties these will bring in um, it lists them out for you when you first start this so that you can bring them in and then it's going to ask you what your shipping rates are so and you can edit these so you would go add a rate and then what you would do is you fill this up do you want real-time rates if you want that you have to upgrade and i believe it's the 80 dollars to upgrade to that one you get your free shipping or you do a flat rate i did minus flat rate as you can see up here the 475 um, per order it's standard and it's a flat rate I do have a free shipping and you can set both of these up, but that is for $100 and up. Then they get their free shipping. Um, this is show additional shipping rates. So this was, um, let me go back because I accidentally clicked on it. So if you do show additional shipping rates, this comes up by um, order weight, order total, and um, item quantity. There are some consultants out there who will ship based on order weight. But here, here's the issue with this. If you set this up, if you go into the screen and you look at it and you go to set this up, you have to know what your shipping rate is. Uh, for orders that are weighing between this and this would be this. Orders between weighing this and this with no max. And then you can keep adding to them. But this becomes very cluttered when um, your customers are checking out online. And the reason why I say that is because we, at least I don't, when I do put in my items, I don't put in how much they weigh. Like if a necklace weighs one ounce, I don't put in one ounce. And that's okay. I mean, there are consultants that do it this way, which is fine. But again, for your online orders, it may not be appropriate because not everybody's going to know, okay, I'm going to order this necklace. This is two ounces. I'm going to order this one. This one's four ounces. And then combine that's, you know, um, six ounces. And for it's six ounces, I'm paying 10 bucks in shipping. It doesn't really, you know, it's not convoluted that way. I mean, not convoluted. It's not really, doesn't really make sense. That's what I was trying to say. But anyway, so you can do that. You can do, you know, 
if it's a standard and you want to do it or if it's two day overnight how much you want to do and you can keep adding it all back your fallback rate would be okay 475 boom fallback but i personally won't i personally will say do not do the buy rates i mean by weight um, order total, you can do it by order total, but then again, how do you know? How do you know that six necklaces is going to be uh, going to weigh, say, like 15 ounces, and or you have a bracelet in there that may weigh one ounce more? How are you going to know that? How are you going to know? I mean, you're going to have hundreds of rules in here. And again, if it falls in between or it's just short of one, how does it know to pull that? So again, you know, may not be the best thing to put on those, but I'm just giving you, um, showing you everything that it has so you get ideas. Item quantity. Again, you're gonna fill this out. This is your shipping rate. Uh, for, orders, for orders between one and five, it costs this much, shipping rate but orders from six to seven cost this much. You know, it it's fine if you're tracking, if you have a customer who wants to do 10 orders or whatever, but normally this would be more for if you're a restaurant or catering or any of that where you have the orders and you have six, so six orders to, to seven orders, you pay um, $19 for your shipping or whatever it is. This is, this also can be for um, specialty orders, like for gutters or for any of that. So you have, you have some room to play with these. Again, personally, I don't um, put those. I just did the flat shipping rate and the free shipping, which made a lot of sense because it's $4.75 per order. That means no matter how, how many pieces you buy from me, you're only gonna get the $4.75 for your shipping. So if you ordered uh, four pieces at $20, your order's now $24.75, you're out the door, you know how much you're paying. You're not gonna have to add up, okay, well, I have five orders, I need to pay this amount or, um, each necklace weighs, you have to go back and look, each way, necklace weighs this much and I'm going to have to pay this much in my order. That's too confusing for your customers. Uh, customers, being in customer service for as long as I have been before I started selling paparazzi, I worked fast food for five years and I worked uh, retail for almost 20. And I can tell you, your customers want cut and dry. They don't want to have to, they want you to tell them what their price is. So like when you go to Lowe's, and they say per square foot, and then you scan it. Each one of those is already priced out per square foot. You're not gonna stand there with the tape measure and go, okay, so three feet is five bucks. Now, if I add another three feet, that becomes six, that's five, that's 10 bucks, but wait, it's not a real full three feet. So, I mean, you're not gonna want that. It's, it should be just cut and dry and you know they want to they want to check out and enjoy their products not have to um, feel like they're back in school and doing math and then again you always have where you can name your name your shipping rate so mine always says standard that's because that's what i named it i was being a, a little um non-creative when I named it. I'm trying to get back to where I need to be. Okay, here we go. So you have your destination, your, um, add a shipping rate, Canada, United Kingdom, do not add this. This will break this. Not only that, we are not allowed to ship to Canada in the United Kingdom. Keep that in mind. So if you did this rate and you did this rate, it will break this rate, believe me. I've done it. It took me almost 10 minutes to figure out why my, when I was going through and doing a testing, why it wasn't coming up. And it was because I had this on there. I had to go in and literally take out all of the customizations on that. And then your advanced setting here. You have your real time um, 
you have your DHLs, your post office, your FedEx, you know, your UPS. My envelopes, this is what my standard envelopes are. My worldwide availability, I just went ahead and marked everything. Um, my label format for right now is because I don't have a four by six thermal printer. Mine is five by 11, so I'm cutting it down. Um, this will also run into with, um, let me sign in here. <laughs> if you have Shippo, which I do, this runs into Shippo and it keeps that. So they pay the 475 and it keeps track of your labels when you put them in. You can adjust your labels and it will keep everything for you. As soon as I can get in here. So here's my eight by four. This one's a little bigger. I usually have a seven, seven by two by two. This is all everything that I've shipped out. Um, you can go into your settings. I clicked on the wrong button, wrong thing. So you go into your settings here and all of that stuff that I showed you and the, sh the shipping will pull over into Square except for your labels and your packaging. So here in Shippo, because even though it's integrated and I pulled my orders in, um, I have it set to a 5 by 11 f PDF. Um, default packing is this. I have my name. Um, this is what comes on there. So it's Blue Shoes Paparazzi Accessory and Jewelries. Jewelry or Blue Shoes Gems Paparazzi Accessory. So that shows up at the top of the order. Um, I can select a carrier. Um, I never select a default carrier. I leave this open and I'll show you why in a minute. And then the return label options for this, I leave this blank as well. I don't do return labels unless if it's absolutely 100% necessary. And I can do that on my front page where you see I have a little drop down. I'll show you that too, where you can go in and do this. Um, the carriers are much similar to what Square has, right? I went in and I opened these up. I have an account with FedEx, I mean, sorry, United Postal. I have an account with um, DHL. I do have an account with FedEx and I do have an account with UPS. So my FedEx one isn't showing here because I haven't connected it, but my UPS does. When I go in and I do, so I don't have, anything set as my default, which according to this, I don't, but I do. And it's UPS, I mean USPS. This is the one I use the most. But when I go to do um, a label and goes to the ship out, it brings up um, United Post, it brings up the post office for me, it brings up DHL, it brings up FedEx, and it brings up UPS. And it tells me which one out of these is cheaper for the weight of my package, and it's normally um, the post, the USPS, the post office. So there's that. I mean, it doesn't pull over as much as I would like it to. So your labels, you would have to go in and you do, you would literally have to set this to default as your, um, and I'll show that to you. So this is your labels. So you have to go in and default all of this part of it, and then on your packaging. You always want to do ounce. Your defaults would be inches. You could do pounds if you want, but it throws it off. And then here is my medium envelope, and then here's my small envelopes. So my medium envelopes are the seven by seven by two inches, and then my small envelopes are the eight by four by two. Now here's where it's tricky. Notice that there's three three things here. So if you only have one that says eight by four, and you're like, where am I getting that extra two? That sticky lip is an extra two inches. So you put that in there. Same thing here. Um, actually, mine is a seven by seven and one quarter by two. 
I did it seven by seven by two. It doesn't make a difference even with the quarter, it's still about the same price. So I just, I rounded down just a tiny bit for it, but, um, but again, that two inches is coming from that sticky lip. So you have to go in and you set this. And then when you're creating your label, you just pick which one that you have, whether it's your small or your medium. I'm gonna um, pretty soon have a large one here going on. And then um, you just print your label and you're off, you're good to go. Um, you can track a package, your tracking page. This tells you, um, you have to upgrade here, and I'm again not 100 for 100 percent for it for upgrading. I'm so cheap that the word free is like the best thing. I get excited when I hear something free, and I make sure it's free. But you can upgrade. I think it's like if you want to, depending on your volume, ten bucks, you get this part of it. Um, if you go, I can show you pricing on this later, but this really isn't the best. I mean, if you want, if you want it, you can have it. You can have an app on your computer, an app on your phone, and it will track your packages for you. I have actually on my phone, and most of you are new to uh, not seeing my phone on the screen because normally I have my phone attached. Looking for it. It is an actual shipping app that you can use. I took it off. I might have. But you can use it and you type in your. Um, no, I didn't. It's called package.net and it's it's really cool. Um, you type in the status of your package, like awaiting shipment and transient, awaiting for delivered delivery. Um, you can add a package. So usually what I do is I add my, um, after I put it in there, I add it into my app on my phone and um, you can see it. Um, the next video, I'll show you how to use that if, if you want to see it. If not, then it's not a big thing. It's very pretty easy and straightforward. Pretty much you just put in your tracking info and boom, you have it all right there for you, um, which is which is good. That's that's what you want. So let's get back into this. And then again, here I have mine four by eight by two. Uh, max weight, 10 pounds select everything format for me right now is this one. Now, if you upgrade, you can um, if you upgrade in Square, if you upgrade for the 80 bucks, you can print your labels right off of Square and not have to worry about it. Unfortunately, again, like I said, free, I'm so cheap that free it gets me excited. I love free stuff. If I can you if I can do the same thing that everybody else can, but for free, I'm gonna do it. You know, like pirate ship. I love Shippo over pirate ship. And the reason why I do that and I like it because not only does it integrate with my Square store, but it also Square picks up the zones. This is so important. I see a lot of people, especially on Facebook, saying, Hey, I had to pay this extra and I was shipping to zone three. Well, guess what? I don't have to pay that extra shipping to zone to zone three. I weigh, put it in, tells me it's four bucks. I pay four bucks. If there's a discrepancy, I don't worry about it. Square picks that up for me. So that's where that's nice with Shippo and the integration for your store. I mean, you can still use Pirate Ship because it is an outside just like um, Shippo. The only thing is with Shippo, and I will show you here when we go back. Is that you can tell very easily um, so you can tell very easily these little ones these ones came from um, square these ones I typed in I have a record of them 
if I want. I can re I can do a refund label. I can download packing slip. I can do a, a create re create another label. So with the same customer, I can create another label. It pulls everything in for me. I just have to um, check my my boxes, my package weight. Um, if it comes from online, it will give you the items. When you're filling, when you're doing one of these, when you're creating a label, it does give you the option to put in the items. In here. So you'd fill this out, you get all this, you fill this out to the person, you go to save and continue, and it, it gives you an option if you want to put some items in here, or yeah, I'm not going to go through this whole thing because I don't want to save this label and it's a pain to um, get off once I get it on. I mean, it's easy, but I just don't want to go through <laughs> to it. So I shouldn't say it's a pain. I just don't want to go and delete this off of here because um, I want to keep my books as neat and as possible as I can because it will ask me to pay for a label and if I don't pay for it, it will sit and keep paying me to pay for the label and I really don't want to pay for a label so it throws my books off so I won't do it but there is an option when you do save and continue to ask you want to add an item and you could either type out the names or you can do um you know just put paparazzi accessories whatever you want in there um but what I like about the square thing is when it comes from square it actually pulls it over um this didn't pull over on my items, it didn't pull over my picture because I didn't have it set that way. Now in Square, it should have the picture of what they're ordering and it should come over now. Um, I had I just did that today, so we'll see if when somebody else orders if it comes comes that way. And then again, my standard shipping, standard shipping. Um, so this is it's all nice, it's all right here. You can always um, how many you want to show, how many you want to hide. Uh, download, this is downloading your actual uh, shipping label. Again, you got send notification email. What I like about Shippo is that I don't have to do that send notification email. It automatically sends it. As soon as it goes into this, as soon as I print the label, it says it's shipped. And it gives them and three hours later it literally drops the, the, the tracking number into their uh, email address and then again refund label download packing slip create and hide order again if this isn't very hard to set up the pickup and delivery you can do this if you want to do anything local but it comes in very it's a very convoluted way of doing it and then you have your taxes I don't do taxes in the state that I'm in, so I don't set it up, but you would set it up like what Canada would be, United Kingdom, United States. This is hard to set up because you're gonna have so many different sales taxes. So I don't, one of the reasons why I don't set it up. And then you have all of these that you can um, click on. And then of course your square sync syncs all your items. Anyway, um, I hope that helps you out on trying to get your shipping stuff all set out for you. Um, Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time.